Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you the latest slider from uh, Rhino, it's the ARC2. So I've got the slider and I've got the four axes, uh, basically a complete set. Uh, so I'll just show you guys kind of quickly how I set it up and how I use it in my workflow. So uh, what I got here with me is uh, I've got the whole kit basically, the four axes. Uh, so I've got the slider itself, um, which if you want, you can actually use it like a traditional slider. But the real cool thing about the, the ARC-2 is, you know, when you get the whole kit. So, uh, for example, you can get this, which is the pen and tilt head. Uh, and the, this will actually work even without the slider. So you can use this for uh, just basically remotely, let's say, pen and tilting your camera, or you're using it for, to track your face and things like that, or you're using, you know, this for, for time lapse if you want where let's say if you're doing a time lapse where you don't really care about the slider move. So that's basically the, you know, you can do all of this in here. Now, if you want to have one extra functionality with this, you can also get the, uh, the file focus module that they have. So it will also allow you to uh, program and basically, you know, focus your lens remotely or through the app. Um, now, if you get the slider and then the motor that I have up here, I have the high speed motor. They also have the high torque motor, which is, from what I understand, there's a slower one, but it, it, it can handle more weight if you're going like, you know, vertically, let's say even 90 degrees. This one uh, can still handle a fair amount of weight, uh, but it's more designed to be kind of, well, you know, when you have your slider in a horizontal position. Um, so, like I said, this thing, you don't necessarily have to use it with the slider, but in this case, I'm, I will. But if you just wanted to first, let's say, start it off and let's say you can't afford to get the whole kit, you can just get this. And I'll show you, it has a, a, a ton of really great functionalities. So first thing I'm going to do is mount it here on the slider. This would be the same as if you were mounting this on a tripod. Uh, and the cool thing about this is that uh, the ARC2 has basically this function, which kind of speeds up the whole process of, of threading it on, onto, the, uh, onto the, your basically slider or your tripod. So, so I go to the mount on off function. And as you can just put it here where the, the screw is. And then uh, I go turn it on. And as you can see, it just turns on it by its own. And it's just going to kind of hand tighten it, you could say. Uh, and then you just click done. Once you get to that point, they actually give you a little tool here. And you basically just put it in there and you can tighten it all the way using that tool. This tool, by the way, is really cool because this is going to allow you to, for example, like if you want to, you know, attach your camera, let's say, to the base plate, which I already have attached here. Um, so it allows you to do, do that without, let's say, having to, I don't know, reach for your coin in your packet. Uh, not only that, but actually there's a little bat battle opener here. <laughs> and with the battle opener, I guess if you're doing like time lapses, which I, I don't usually do, too many of those, but if you're sitting around waiting for your time lapse to be done, you, know, you might as well have a drink and then you have a bottle opener and it stows away in here. So anyway, so uh, now that the, the, the main, uh, I would say the unit uh, is mounted here on the slider or your tripod, then you would put your camera and it comes with the 501 Manfrotto base plate. Uh, and th this is kind of like this medium size uh, base plate, but let's say if you already have a Manfrotto head or whatever, a base plate, uh, or a head that uses the base plate, you can uh, use the same one. It's going to fit most of them. I, I've tried ones for my Manfrotto head. I also have one from uh, some of the, my gimbals, like the Moza Air 2, that uses the same 501 plate. And then it's good because I can easily take it off my gimbal, put it on the slider, put it on my tripod, stuff like that. To mount it, you just have this lever here to loosen it. Slide the camera in. Then you have the safety pins, like you know, normally you would have on a Manfrotto head. Uh, and then if you just want to tighten it, you press this and your camera's under. I also have a little dummy battery uh, and there's different dummy batteries that Rhino provides. Uh, this one is for the, the Canon, you know, batteries because that's what this camera uses. And then it has a DC plug here at the end and you can actually power it using the battery that's built into the Rhino, which uh, if you know anything about working with the Blackmagic packet cameras, basically the 6K or the 4K, you'll know that they're they're not the greatest on batteries. So it's good to uh, to have that option that you can basically just, you know, power it using your your slider because this this thing actually has a really big battery. So it lasts a, a whole day for me like uh, obviously I'm not non-stop for 24 hours having the slider go, you know, up and down. 
but just setting it up and running around with it and getting shots it lasted me no problem to power the slider the the you know motor the the pen and tilt head and the camera and even the follow focus that's the next thing that i'm going to install so here's the follow focus installation again is very simple you just have this here you just put it in there and the 15 millimeter rod attachment just fit it to your lens and then you just tighten this thing here again i like that they just have these latches just makes it quick once you have that in place, you do have to connect these cables. So the cables basically you know, transmit the power and the signal from the main unit to each of the, the pieces here. So uh, they're like these Ethernet almost cables. So I'm going to plug out this one there. And what does it say? Focus this one goes there. And then here we have another one for uh, the, the motor, basically for on the slider. So it goes like this. And then we'll mount this one here on the slider. Okay, there it is. So yeah, so once you have that connected, like I said, it's uh, you, you kind of have to be careful of where you put these cables because if they get in the way and they get jammed while the slider is going up and down, then you could have some problems. But uh, for the most, like, you know, at the beginning when I was learning to use this, I, I had a few problems where I basically had this get stuck like on my, here on my tripod handle. And then we'll kind of try to yank it on it but now i usually just have it kind of facing forward so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to put the slider it's going to rotate it and i'm just going to have it pointing this way because i actually want to i'm going to show you guys how i set up a shot basically here uh looking at you know at these two different cameras what i like actually the first thing i'll kind of tell you guys about the slider is that you can use obviously the app for ios they're going to have an app released for android sometime soon hopefully i don't know when but uh, it, i've been told that they're working on it but even if you're if you you know don't have a phone or in, like in my case my iphone just dies like crazy the battery so i usually kind of carry actually this little battery bank because without it just my phone just doesn't last uh, regardless of what i'm doing but what's cool is that you can do pretty much everything uh, like right here on the slider now i'm sure as like time goes on as they update the app and they add extra features then there'll probably be extra functionality but right now i'll just show you guys here like right on the slider so uh if i i can go for example and it's very easy also to like navigate you have this joystick and you can see very clearly here in the display so the first thing you probably want to do is uh, calibrate it meaning once you put it, the slider on there, you kind of calibration basically tells the motor how how far it can travel before it reaches the end of the slider. Also, uh, you that's how you calibrate the, the kind of the center position of the camera. So your camera isn't like tilted this much or that way or that way. And then when you're doing pan and tilting, so you don't by accident let's say hit them the lens on the on the front of your um, here slider. So I'm just gonna go to calibrate, press here for start, and here. And it's gonna go all the way to the end of the slider there and that's pretty much it and then i click okay then now i gotta it's asking me to put the camera to its center position so put it there continue and that's it it's calibrated as you can see it's very simple and if you uh, for example connect the first time with the phone app you can do the same thing using the phone app uh, so now uh, i'll kind of show you guys you know different things you can do so one actually function that I didn't think would be uh, very useful to me, but turned out to be very useful, is the fluid view. Fluid view essentially turns this um, this tilt, you know, pen and tilt head into like a. I, I, I would say almost replaces your um, your fluid head on your tripod. So let's say if you do have this just mounted on your tripod, you can now uh, using the, the this function. Basically, up, you know, pan and tilt the camera, and you can do it very smoothly. And as you can see, just using this joystick, so you can get very smooth movements. And and this is really good. For example, like let's say if you have a good sturdy tripod legs, but you don't have a good fluid head. Again, this thing will work, uh, you know, very nicely. And it's very simple. You just go into the option, and then you know you can pan and tilt. Uh, if you want to change the speed of it, they have three settings: medium, uh, slow, and then fast. Then you just you know kind of cycle through it by pressing on it so now i'm going to go to fast speed uh, next function i'm going to exit this is time lapse so you can set up time lapse up here i don't have a really a, a stills camera so i'm not going to really show you guys a time lapse also i don't have time right now to do a time lapse but it basically works the same way as i'm going to show you when you want when you set up a move for video the only difference is with a time lapse it's going to do it over a much longer period of time 
Also, it's you, you can actually trigger the camera. Then you have your settings, so you can, for example, change things like uh, the direction of the joystick, uh, you can change the, which, on which side you mount the motor, because you can mount the motor on whatever side you want. And you can, by the way, also get the longer slider, like this is a 24 inch, which for me I find is plenty. But if you really wanted the longer one, they have one that's 48 uh, inches. And then they also have one that's, because this one's carbon fiber, which is nice because it's light. But they have one also that's made out of, uh, I believe it's aluminum, uh, but it's a bit heavier. Uh, so then you can you can select, for example, your motor type. So I, I in my case, I have the high speed motor. Uh, you can adjust, you know, and select your your length of your slider, things like that. Uh, like I said, my settings are all fine. It's all calibrated. So I'm just going to go to the first function, which is video. So in video, I can go and, as you can see, I can pan and tilt, uh, and I can basically set up my first position. So it's right now it's saying on the screen set keyframe number one now right now you can only set two keyframes uh, i've been told that later on they're gonna allow you to do more than than two keyframes how many i don't know also on the app i guess you, you'll be able to like adjust the timing of between those keyframes and all that stuff but like i said right now it's just two keyframes so right now uh let me basically set up the simple shot uh, here just looking at these two cameras so uh let me turn on the camera first there we are so, I'm just going to pan and tilt here. There's another joystick here in the front, and if you move this joystick left and right, you can basically move it up and down this, on the slider. So, I think I'll put it there. And you see, kind of what I was mentioning about the cable, right now the cable could have gotten stuck there between the, the, the end of the slider. So, I'm just going to put that cable over the motor, and then it should be okay. But anyways, with that joystick in the front, you can move the, uh, by basically moving left and right, you, you slide it on the slider. Moving up and down, you actually adjust uh, the position of the, the follow focus. So now I'm going to set my shot so to make sure that it's in focus. So, so set there. And then basically, once you're happy with your position, let's say maybe I'll tilt this over, then you just press down and that's your first keyframe. Now I'm going to move the slider over here. Maybe, you know what, I'll actually move that camera there in the back in this position. There. And, and again, I'm going to adjust the focus here. So once I'm happy with it, again, I press down. Now I can adjust its duration. So right now it's set to six seconds, so we'll see how that looks. You can put it into loop mode, meaning it's just going to repeat that move over and over. So I'll actually do that. Then I can, for uh, example, go to uh, here, the, the last option, which is just to start the move. So I'll click down here to start the move, and it's going to go to the first position. And once you're happy with it, then you just click record here on the camera, and click again to confirm the camera move. And as you can see, it's going to go, and what's cool is it's actually adjusting the focus for me while it's doing this move, and it just keeps on going back and forth. Now at any point I can pause this, if I want I can, you know, resume it, I can go back, I can edit the move, so for example, if let's say the first position, I don't want the camera to go that far, I can go to here to the first position, I'll go there, and I can now edit that first position, so let's say I want the slider move to start here, there somewhere. And maybe pan over a little bit more. I'll confirm it. And then if I want, I can also go and quickly edit the second position. And here's our second position. So let's see, I'll edit it a little bit here. Something like that. And here again, click confirm. And maybe also change the duration. So now I'm gonna actually maybe go to 15 seconds. Click that and then go click again start move. The same thing, it's going to go to our first position. And now in first position again I just double click again to confirm it. So it's going to do a very slow move now with the same focus pull and it's going to go from one camera to the other. 
Now, I don't know if you guys can hear anything because I can't, but this is actually how loud the motor is. So you could hear before how it was when it was going in its fastest, you know, basically move. So that would be the loudest you would ever hear. So you do hear a little bit, not even really the motor, I think it's just more the slider moving. Uh, but right now you can't hear anything, it's like completely silent. So I have the mic right there. Uh, and anyways, I'll let you guys listen. Yeah, I mean, if I put my ear like right next to it, I can maybe hear it, but I think it's actually more just the lens itself, the gear in the lens is moving. It's basically silent. So, so that's a good thing uh, because if you want to use this like me, mainly for live video applications, then you know that, that you don't have to worry about it, you know, interfering with your audio. I'll show you guys kind of what you can do also using this app. So basically what the app allows you to do is um, it, it just makes it, basically what I just did up here. It just makes it even more intuitive. So uh, basically it, right away, it, see it, it recognizes Tom's Arc 2 here. So I'll click connect. And once you're connected, uh, again, you have your function here. So for example, I can go to video. And again, I can set up my keyframes. So uh, basically you have all the controls now, but instead of doing it there, I guess it's more intuitive, at least for me, because you don't have to be there kind of hunched over over the slider. Uh, you can, you know, actually control the slider move just using this here, kind of a pad on the bottom there. So I can move it left and right. I can here using this thing, I can, you know, pan and tilt. Uh, and you can also adjust the sensitivity of this so you can make it move faster or slower. Uh, and then the same thing with the focus. You have here the focus and it will actually move the, the focus gear for you. And there it's moving the other way. And then once you like it, then you again, it's very simple. You click add keyframe, confirm this, then you go to your second position and so on. Uh, you know, I just change the pan and tilt, add another here keyframe and then just do, you know, playback. So, and again, you can adjust the speed of this. All the same things that you, you could do over there, you can do it in the app. I, I guess it just it's a little bit more faster, more comfortable for some people. But again, it's good that they allow you to do, still do pretty much all those functionalities, but right there without the phone, because like I said, in my case, there was a few times where the phone just died on me. And in this case, uh, yeah, I don't have to worry about it. Um, so that's kind of what the app allows you to do. There, you also have the time-lapse function, which at the time of me doing this video, it says feature coming soon. So it's still not enabled. You have remote. So remote is basically like it says, you can remotely operate the, the gimbal. So let's say if you don't want to set up like a repetitive move, you actually want to remotely operate it. And you have these two pads. So the left pad here will move it left and right, basically on the slider. And if you move up and down, you'll actually change the focus. And then here, the, this pad, uh, move the camera a bit and then this part here on the right uh, pans and tilts the the camera so again you can do all this stuff you can also actually put it in loop mode so that's a kind of a cool fu function that you can put it here and when you have the loop mode right now i have it set to medium for example i can set it to fast then you can basically just leave this so that the camera automatically moves up and down the slider all the way from left to right and then you can basically just kind of sit back and you know, operate just uh, the pan and tilt and the focus if you want. So that's kind of, a, again, a, a cool function. Now, of course, if you have this not on a slider, but on a tripod, you can do the same thing. It just wouldn't be going up and down the slider. So then you just operate pan and tilt. Um, and then, the, um, yeah, like I said, the, the focus. But yeah, as you can see, now I can kind of, in a live environment, I can remotely operate it. So it's a really cool kind of the fact that they allow you, you know, all these functionalities. It's a cool feature. Uh, let me stop here. Um, because like you can see, you can use it for time lapse. You can use it for as a repetitive move. You can use it for a live kind of a almost broadcast uh, setting. Uh, now, of course, keep in mind that this is all working through Bluetooth. So I think the range uh, it's going to be somewhere probably around like 50 feet. Still decent range, but just just keep that in mind that if you get too far away or if there's a lot of interference, then then the connection you might lose between the phone and and the and the unit. Uh, but yeah, you have that, and then you also you have the same kind of things. You have the settings here. You can change all the settings like you could do there. But another function they have here is the tracking function, which when you go there, it basically allows you to track the face. So like, let's say in this case, I'm doing a review and let's say I'm just filming myself and I don't have anybody here with me, 
which in this case I actually do have an assistant here helping, but let's say I don't have anybody, uh, or let's say I'm, I'm thinking of firing my assistant because he's useless, <laughs> then in this case, get yourself this and it's going to track your face. Now, uh, does it always work? It's kind of give and take. Depends on how well the lighting is basically and all that stuff. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to kind of show you guys again quickly how this operates. So put the camera in here, or I mean the phone. So once I have it there, uh, I'll go right now in uh, vlog mode. So you have vlog mode and interview mode. Interview mode means that it's, it's going to look for faces. If it finds one face, it will just track that one face. If it finds two faces, it will basically it always center on the point in between those two faces. Now, also, you can offset the position, which is good. Um, so, for example, in this case right now, I'm going to go, uh, yeah, just vlog mode. And uh, you know what? I'm going to just click start. We'll kind of see how, how it looks after. So it's already looking for me. And then I'm going to go reframe. So I want my head to be kind of lower there. So to give me some kind of headspace here. And I'm going to zoom out here on this lens. So, uh, okay, I think everything's set correctly. So I'm just going to hit record here. And let's see if we'll recognize my face. I'm kind of here. I'm going to have to lie down on this table. But there it is. Okay, so hopefully it's I'm in center. I don't know. Am I am I there in center or no? Yeah, I can see your face. Yeah, I'll okay, see. okay. So yeah, so this is how it works. And then if I go left and right, as you can see, it's it should be following me. Uh, so that's a cool thing. Now it's not going to do, it's not going to be pulling focus for you, obviously. Uh, so in this case, uh, because, you know, it just doesn't know what's, what's, uh, basically what, what is it really that you want to have in focus or it doesn't have the live feed basically from the camera. So in that case, you probably want to use it with a, with a camera that has good AF. Uh, but yeah, you can, you know, if I'm again doing a review, I can pick up the camera, talk about, and, uh, you know, it's going to be, I'm going to have to, I guess, wait and see just how well this feature works over time. Now I can also, the good thing is that for example, if I get out of there, it's going to, after three seconds, it's going to just stop looking for you. And then it's going to, you know, kind of go again and search. So I'm going to quickly just do playback and see whether I was more or less in center. So yeah, the shot actually looked really good. And now again, I can keep on recording and let's see, it should pick me up again. Yeah. So basically once you get, get, go back into the frame, uh you know like so the phone can see you it's gonna sort of start recording you again so this is kind of how it looks um uh, so in this case like i said for maybe not for every scenario because if i start like for example looking away then it's again it will lose you know tr will stop tracking your face because it's basically just looking for faces uh or if the lighting's really bad or that kind of thing then again might have problems but if i'm doing stuff here in the studio it pretty much means that uh, my assistant is useless so i can fire him so can save some money <laughs> um okay so let's maybe here let me stop this because right now it's kind of freaking me out because it's <laughs> it's following me <laughs> the whole time so yeah that's the the creepy thing about technology yeah I definitely don't want this to be looking at me all the time so I'll turn this off <laughs> all right so that's kind of more or less you know all the features how they work um uh, again you can buy just this thing and then you can kind of slowly go over and you know buy the file focus by the slider by the slider motor you can add all those things or you can buy the whole thing as a kit uh, what i do like is uh, they have they have a hard case and a soft case i find this soft case to be sufficient what i what mean by this is that like let's say if you just have the slider it will fit in here obviously the slider but what i also like how they did this is because and, and i'm saying this from experience because i've had various other sliders that always come you know with the, with a kind of a soft padded case like this one and it's all great until you start adding all these things like for example the you know the head the the the, the other motor all these things and then it's become such a headache trying to fit all that in that case because the cases are only designed to fit just the slider and then sometimes, you know, the only way to basically to get around that is I would have to like disassemble, take the, let's say the pen and tilt head off and all these things. But what I like with this is that I can pretty much just take off the camera, which, you know, because of the quick release plate, it's easy to do, but everything else I can leave intact. And it actually fits in this case because they kind of did this, that this portion rises up. And yeah, it just basically means that I can, you know, put the whole slider in there with the head on this side. You can lock it, you have these little straps, keeps it all secure. It is padded pretty well all, all around. 
And that's basically what I've been using when I've been kind of traveling with this and, and shooting on locations. Also, you have this little kind of a netted pouch here. Uh, so you can keep all the other little accessories like extra cables that it comes with. Um, yeah, like a little uh, follow focus actually gear. So if you have lenses that aren't geared, you can put that on there. Things like that. So, you know, it's kind of cool again. And I, I think it's a good idea if you're going to get a case. You can get the hard case, but it's it's heavier and it's a bit more sturdy. But I, I find that this one's just, you know, sufficient for most situations. Uh, and like I said, I like the fact that I can be pretty quick with this system. And that, that's, uh, I would say, maybe the, the, the key thing about this is um, kind of comparing it to all the other sliders, and especially the motorized sliders that I've been kind of working with before, is that I like that this one is, is out of all of them, the fastest to set up. Because like I said, I can have it all pretty much there except the camera. Take it out of the bag and either put it on, you know, it has the little legs here, by the way, so you can uh, put it right straight down on the legs. Uh, but usually I, I kind of just put it on, on a tripod. Um, and yeah, yeah, you can just loosen this and it basically has these four legs on each side there. Um, so if you only can put it all the way down on the ground. Uh, but either way, like I said, it's it's basically the fastest slider for me to, like, the, so far that I've been working with. So I take it out, put the camera on there, and I'm pretty much ready to so start recording. Setting up the moves is very fast, which which is you know something that I really like. And then the fact that they include those extra little features, like the, the fact that you can use it pretty much like a pen and tilt head, or uh, you know the face tracking, things like that. Those are just extra, really useful, I think, features to have in there. And I just hope that they... You know, they don't abandon the, the people who decide to buy into the system and they keep on updating the app because, like I said, right now the app allows you to do all those things that I showed you guys, but ho hopefully they can kind of make it even more full featured. And definitely, I would say for me, uh, you know, f f maybe there's some time lapse features you guys want, and they do actually have like a little form you can go in and you can uh, basically put in your request for different features that you want. Uh, for me, because I don't shoot a lot of time lapse, for me the main thing would be is the ability to add more than just two keyframes, because then that would be really really sweet. Because like sometimes like I found myself that I wanted to move the camera, and I it pretty much just wanted to have two positions when it came to just the on the slider and the pen and tilt. But then when it came to focus, I needed to have three or four actually keyframes for the focus. So hopefully they can implement something like that where you can have let's say more keyframes on the focus than you can on that because otherwise it, sometimes I end up having a shot where it's just like and it wasn't in focus until it reached all the way to the end of the slider move and it kind of meant that like halfway in between the shot was out of focus and I would want to be able to sometimes you know basically just hit that focus mark quicker um, so that's really the only kind of request I would say for me so if you guys are you know at Rhino there if you're listening uh, hopefully you can add that feature but otherwise yeah I'm super happy with it and what I'm also happy with it is that it can handle the bigger weight uh, it can, I forget, I think it's up to 10 or 15 pounds. You guys check the specs because it will tell you what's the maximum weight that you can put. Now, I did have some problems here with this lens. This is a 20 to 70 DZO lens. And actually right now here in the studio when I was kind of setting up, I had problems with it simply because like when I was outside, I had no problems with it. Now it's like all of a sudden and I just had problems sometimes panning basically uh, up and down. The tilt was okay. I mean, uh, tilting up and down, the panning was okay. And uh, and I think it was because of the lens, because then when I threw on a smaller lens, it worked. When I put this heavier lens on there, it stopped working. So eventually I just ended up moving the camera back further and, and now it works. So that's something again that um, uh, to keep in mind that if you have a heavier camera, or definitely a camera that's kind of more tap heavy, center it better on the on the on the slide on the, on the plate there uh, that's the only thing kind of you know so that it's not too front heavy or too back heavy but that's pretty much yeah the only thing to keep in mind so really there's nothing bad that i can say about this like in fact it's pretty much all good things which rarely happens when i review these kind of things um, so if you guys are looking for a motorized slider something that can do very accurate moves or also very fast moves um, and that can handle a bigger payload and can do all the, like I said, the fact that it can do focus in there, so basically four axes. Uh, definitely give uh, Rhino Arc a try. And something that uh, I just noticed today on their website is uh, there's a program. I don't know all the details, so you guys can check that out on their website. But it, there basically, it seems like a, like a trade-in program, like where you, if you have other sliders from other brands or some of their sliders that are the older ones, you can actually go 
and uh, basically trade on your slider and you'll get like 500 bucks or whatever you know discount towards the the arc 2 so that's also a really cool thing but anyways as always if you want all those details and uh, links to all that stuff uh, check the description of this video or go to my website at tomantusfilms.com and as you know if you guys are there as always don't forget to uh, subscribe to my newsletter if you haven't already so you stay notified whether it's these kind of new reviews that I do or other filmmaking tutorials and, uh, and other cool uh, filmmaking content. Anyways, my name is Tom and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!